I'm here with Sabra Cook from Colorado in the US, who's taking part in this year's W Series and is one of our elite female racing drivers. Um, Sabra, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so from a very young age, um, I was lucky enough to have a father that was involved in motorsports. He raced motocross and supercross professionally. So him and my mother didn't want us racing motorcycles, though. So we got into karting from a, a young age. Um, my dad actually ended up building a karting track in our hometown. So I grew up running around there, um, getting in all sorts of, of trouble and, and getting playing in the dirt and stuff like that. And then um, progressed into cars um, later on um, in my career, as well as I'm also a mechanical engineer and graduate with a Bachelor's of Science in the end of 2017. How did it feel as a young girl kind of trying to make your way into one of the most male-dominated sports in the world? Um, it, I guess I get that question a lot but for me it's not it's all I've ever really known so for me it was it was a normal growing up it was a normal childhood for me but it was um, at times it was definitely trying um, you get you get treated a bit differently by your peers obviously if, you, if you're a female mostly surrounded by males in your sport so um, it, I would say it definitely didn't come without its challenges but I think it kind of built me into a stronger more robust character um, throughout all those experiences and now with the W Series, um, I think this year you're now supporting the Formula One circuit as well. How does it feel racing on some of those same, same circuits as the Formula One teams? It's pretty amazing. Um, obviously, like just being able to be a part of the whole atmosphere is incredible. Um, but then being able to race on like these tracks that you, you know, most of us only get to ever see on TV is like it's pretty spectacular, especially to be there on the same weekend. So um, I'm really looking forward to, to having that experience and driving all the different tracks this year for the very first time, except for Coda. So I'm, I'm happy for the home race. But um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience. So I guess if I was to ask you which is your favorite track or which is the one maybe you're looking forward to most? I mean, I feel like there's so many that like you always want to drive. So I, I am looking forward to absolutely all of them, <laughs> but um, it, it will be nice to have the home race. Um, but I think it will be something special to also race at Spa for the first time. And over the years that you've been involved in the sport, have you seen the number of women grow? I think, you know, with a lot of sports um, and STEM subjects in particular, STEM careers, women are particularly underrepresented. How have you seen that evolve over time and what more do you think we could do to change that going forward? Uh, when I was younger, there was definitely, I feel like, a bit more of a growth. And then I honestly felt like the numbers dropped off, which is kind of seems like what everyone else saw. But then in the last few years, there's obviously been this more resurgence of, of women in, in tech, in motorsports. So that's obviously a positive thing to see. Um, and I think in order for us to continue to grow that is having conversations like this, showing that there are women involved in motorsports, in tech, and it is a feasible career, and then showing you know the young girls from day one that it is a feasible option for them and then encouraging their support system around them to let them try those options. And you've, you've, you're an engineer and you're a racing driver as well. How do you marry the two together? How do you balance that? Well, I have arguments in my head quite a lot, but <laughs> it's, um, I guess it's just about like having the right focus and um, controlling the things you can control and just trying to you know put the engineering cap on when you need it and putting the driver cap on when you need it and uh, but sometimes they obviously they can complement the two so like when I'm in my with my racing if, if I get a bit emotional or passionate or something like that I can take things from a more very factual analytical perspective being the engineer and look at it in maybe a more efficient way. And talk about your ambitions for the future because I think you've talked about potentially having um, you know, running your own team at some point in the future. Is that still a dream? Um, I don't know if I would ever run my own team, but I, I'd love to be able to obviously mentor young, young girls as I am now and encourage them to continue to step forward um, in, in ways that I have and obviously go for much further and beyond what I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what, uh, what the future has in store for me. I know that there's a lot of things that I, I want to be doing, but uh, right now focus is, is W Series and maybe in the future we'll, we'll see. I, I'd love to get involved back again in, in like the race engineering part of things and maybe go back to F1 or, or try to go to IndyCar. So, but that, that's a discussion for the future. <laughs> Brilliant. And there's, I guess there's huge amounts of STEM involved with racing, whether it's the aerodynamics, Newton's law, and you know, one of the things that's important to MasterCard is encouraging girls into these technology and, and science subjects. 
What would you say would be the, the kind of the main, the main quality that girls should look at developing, the main skill area, if they want to kind of get into motorsport in any of those different career opportunities? Um, I mean, obviously with STEM, the core of it is math. So <laughs> I know some people hate math, but um, one thing I do want to point out is some people may not like math because they haven't been introduced it into, introduced to it in the right way. Um, I think teachers have a massive impact on whether the student takes to a subject. So maybe if you think you might be interested in something and you're just like, oh, I'm just no good at it, don't tell yourself that. Maybe you just need to approach it in a different way and learn it in a different way to be able to, to take it on like others and, and be as effective as them. You know, I'm guessing the principles of aerodynamics and things are probably going to be quite similar, but you've driven sports cars, you've driven kind of single-seater cars as well. Is the science different? Um, I mean, obviously, the, the basics, the science, the principles are always the same. Um, there's just, they're just utilized in a different way, the rules are different, the way that the things that you can maximize are different, but <laughs> the laws of science are always the same, they're, the basics are always the same. And which do you prefer driving, given a choice? You can never drive the other one again. Um, I, always, I would always choose, um, choose one of the top formula cars to drive because the, the car will always be, so much, be able to outperform so much more like a GT car. I know <laughs> some people will hate on me for saying that, but um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing thing to experience when you get to drive one of the, the very, very elite formula um, like formula types of cars yeah and I guess you know things can go wrong it's got to be pretty scary you've got to need a lot of confidence when you're out there driving that how do you kind of manage that confidence how do you kind of talk yourself up to it every time you get in um, I guess each driver is different um, but in in general we you know we have our warm-up routine before we get in the car to activate ourselves physically mentally we go through mantras visualization um, which is massive in any any professional sport and then uh, just knowing that it's not like it's about focusing on the right thing again right so if you focus like oh my gosh i don't want to crash probably going to crash <laughs> but if you just focus on you know performance and the things that you can do in order to to if you just focus on doing the corner correctly you're not going to crash. So it's just about limiting those distractions and limiting that focus. So Sabre, you've talked about um, maths being a key to, to most STEM subjects, but for girls that aren't necessarily interested in maths, but who love motorsport, are there routes for them into the sport? Absolutely. There is, motorsports is a business just like any other industry, and there are key roles in so many things, whether it be media, like we're doing right now, um, marketing, or from the business side of things, or you can still be involved in tech industries and just approach it from a different way, whether it, you know, you could have something to do with graphic design, or um, we have a lot of modelers that go in, you know, in the car industry that are more artistic in, in the way that they look at things. So just because maybe you're not mathematically inclined doesn't mean that you can't have a place here if that's what you love. Thanks Sabra, it's been really really interesting talking to you and hearing about your background um, and I guess good luck for the remainder of the season. Thank you so much. For anybody who's interested in learning more about Mastercard's Girls for Tech program please visit girlsfortech.com.